This is my best impression of more Doug DeMuro. In all seriousness, guys, welcome to my garage and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about sharing my lifelong love of cars and everything related to cars with you guys. If you've been liking the videos on my channel, if they've been making you happy, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button because it really helps out my growing channel. But let's get to today's topic and that is the Porsche 911 GT3 and what happened over the last few weeks, why it got momentarily banned from California before getting reinstated as something that could be sold. The GT3 is sort of the top of the heap when it comes to the 911s that are designed for road use. It's, it's basically the sharpest handling, kind of sharpest driving Porsche 911 that you could actually drive on a daily basis. There are faster versions of the 911, um, for example, the GT3 RS or the GT2 RS, uh, but those are really for track use. And so I would argue that the GT3 is kind of the, the, the king of the hill when it comes to sharp handling, road going 911s that you can kind of use on a daily basis if you wanted to. And if you've been following the Porsche world, you may be aware that there's a new generation. So as you can imagine, fans of the 911 were really stoked about the GT3 coming to America. But earlier this month, around the middle of June, Porsche announced that in California, they could not sell the manual transmission version of the GT3. And obviously, people who consider themselves purists who want the manual transmission were totally distraught. And then, in a move that gave everybody more whiplash than the acceleration of the GT3, Porsche announced about a week later that, actually just kidding, we can sell the manual GT3 in California. So, what happened? Why was it banned in the first place? Well, the basic problem was that the GT3 manual version actually failed a drive-by noise test that California uses to test every vehicle that can be sold in the state. To understand what happened, we have to look at the California drive-by noise test. The basic idea is that a car drives by a microphone and then they, they measure the sound level, but there are some more details that we have to understand. In this test, the car starts at 31 miles per hour or 50 kilometers per hour and accelerates past the microphone. And the first issue that kind of comes up with the manual for the manual GT3 is the fact that automatic cars and manual cars are actually tested differently. With automatic transmission cars, you start out at 31 miles an hour and the driver actually pushes the pedal just up to the point where the car does not kick down to the lowest possible gear at that speed. So it's not actually wide open throttle. It, you know, normally if you just jam the pedal to the metal, the car will drop down as many gears as it possibly can. But the test, the testing procedure says that we cannot do that. You actually accelerate just, just short of that basically. So it's not actually wide open throttle. Meanwhile, with manual transmission cars, you put it in either second or third gear, and there's a kind of a formula to determine which gear you start in, and then the driver has to mash the, <laughs> mash the gas pedal to the floor. So you are at wide open throttle. This difference in the testing procedure explains why the manual version of the GT3 got kind of held up <laughs> and failed the test, whereas the automatic or the PDK version of the GT3 passed with no problem. And in fact, the testing procedure is actually really tough for manual transmission cars just in general in modern times. The test was actually designed in 1984, that's 37 years ago. And back then, most manual transmissions had three or four forward gears. Nowadays, manual transmissions typically have six, sometimes seven, but typically six gears, including the GT3. So why is that a problem? Well, the testing procedure tell, tells us that, you know, most cars start in third gear. Well, third gear out of four gears is very different from third gear out of six. So effectively, what we're doing is we're actually using a lower gear than the test procedure actually intended for. And what that causes is that the RPMs are actually going to be likely a lot higher than intended by the people who, you know, the, the folks who originally designed the test. But this still begs the question, why couldn't Porsche design the manual transmission GT3 to just satisfy the test? Well, there's actually a newer testing procedure that the SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers, has created. And this one was created in 2008 and was updated as recently as May of last year, 2020. And Porsche was kind of counting on California to adopt this new test by the time they were trying to roll out the GT3. 
The most notable difference between the old test and the new test is that the new test does not actually call for wide open throttle or full throttle during the test, even for manual transmission cars. In both cases, the tests were designed to sort of simulate kind of driving in you know, urban or suburban areas. And my guess is that back in 1984, you were probably gonna use wide open throttle a lot more often than you do today with these you know, cars that have just monstrous amounts of power. So basically what happened was that Porsche thought that California was gonna get with the times and adopt this new test and that the, the manual transmission GT3 would be tested under partial throttle, but you know, California kind of uh, didn't <laughs> adopt the new test. And so the GT3 was tested at wide open throttle and failed the test. But this story has a happy ending. About a week later, uh, on June 22nd, Porsche announced that, hey guys, actually, in fact, we can sell the GT3 manual <laughs> in the state of California. And they had said, they said that they had apparently worked out some kind of solution with the state to enable them to sell the GT3. And so far, Porsche has not disclosed any of the details of said solution. And I suspect we'll never find out what those details are. Um, as with many things that are kind of one-off agreements in the world of legalities and such, um, it's probably confidential and we probably won't find out what it is. So I, for one, as a manual transmission enthusiast, am just really grateful that Porsche was able to work out a solution because that means they're gonna be able to sell more manual GT3s, which means that it makes more economic sense for them to keep producing these things. And, you know, long live the manual, right? Save the manuals. I, I think it's just a, it's, it's a hugely important part of the enjoyment of driving a car. All right, guys, well, that's all for today's story. And if you liked this video or you learned something new, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button uh, for more content coming out on my channel. I really appreciate every like, every subscribe. I, I see all of it, and uh, and if you have any comments, uh, please leave them below. I love getting comments from you guys. It just means that we have this this little community growing here. So thank you so much for engaging and, and watching until the end, and I will see you next time.